Greetings students of the Force and welcome back to the channel. Over the years of the Star Wars lore as we know it, a great many Jedi have fallen in battle by the thousands whilst defending the galaxy with the light side of the Force. Although to the common people, the Jedi seemed like powerful and nigh untouchable foes, there have been a select few that have specialized in directly slaying Jedi, and made killing Jedi not only a science but an art form. These individuals possess powers, skills, and attributes that made them notorious in galactic history, and today we have decided to rank who we believe to be the most efficient Jedi killers. Keep in mind for this list, we will not necessarily be judging them solely on kill counts alone, as that would be much more of a debate. Rather, we are ranking these individuals on their ruthless efficiency. So without further ado my friends, let us begin with the most skilled Jedi killers in Star Wars lore. As a quick disclaimer, this list mainly features force wielders and those with the abilities to touch the dark side of the force. So if you would like a video detailing the best Jedi killers that were not in fact force sensitive, please leave a like and request it down below. Now, let us begin. At our number 5 spot, we have Darth Maul. Maul is one of those that is hard to ignore when it comes to raw talent and skill on the battlefield. In a time during the pre-Clone Wars era, Maul was trained by Sidious to become the finest Sith assassin of the era. At this time, the Sith were still very much trying to keep their identity a secret from the wider galaxy, and most assuredly from the Jedi themselves. Due to this, Maul was tasked with the risky mission of assassinating any of Palpatine's political rivals as well as even a few Jedi, a monumental task as the Sith had to maintain their secrecy. It has been documented that a young Maul killed three Jedi before killing Qui-Gon Jinn on Naboo and facing his defeat at the hands of a Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi. The first Jedi that Maul cut down was named Siolu or Maku. He was a Twi'lek Jedi considered to be a great warrior within the Order. He decided to retire from the Jedi Order and went off to another system far on the Outer Rim in order to meditate on the Force. Here, the Jedi Master remained for over 70 years until Lord Maul, who at the time was still a Sith in training, found him. Because the Master had given up his lightsaber after leaving the temple, he only had a staff imbued with the Force in order to protect him. Darth Maul fought and lost his first duel with the Jedi Master. This taught Maul though a valuable lesson, as this was the catalyst for him crafting his saber staff, a double-bladed lightsaber. After many painstaking hours forging his perfect weapon, Maul later returned to cut down the Jedi in their second duel, surprising him with his second blade. The next two were Jedi Master Anun Bandara and his Padawan Darsha Asan. In the era before the Clone Wars, Anun was one of the most skilled Jedi with the lightsaber during the time. While on a mission in the Coruscant Underworld, Anun and his Padawan encountered a young Darth Maul chasing a man as well as a droid. Anun engaged Maul in a lightsaber duel, only to find out that he was outmatched, outmatched by the young Sith assassin. Anun ultimately sacrificed himself so that Maul's prey could escape with Darsha. Unfortunately though, the Jedi Padawan too lost her life. We count these as notable kills as these Jedi utterly disappeared right under the Council's nose during a time when the Sith were supposedly gone for a thousand years, not even raising any suspicion. After Maul's return with Savage Opress, he would kill six more Jedi with the help of his brother. This would include an entire five Jedi task force handpicked from the Order's best combatants, as well as the Jedi Council member, Adi Galia, all who would ultimately fall to either the Blade of Savage or Maul. At number four, we have Arcan and Thexan. Arcan and Thexan were the twin sons of the Sith Lord Emperor Vitiate of the Eternal Empire during the time of the Old Republic era. These two boys were the leaders of the Eternal Empire's military and spearheaded the campaign that led the Empire to great strength during this time as they took advantage of the already drastic war happening between the Republic and the returned Sith Empire with the Eternal Empire being a separate entity. With their golden blades at their side, the twins cut down both Jedi and Sith in massive droves on the battlefield. Arcan and Thexan showed a great natural talent with the Force, as well as having been trained relentlessly from a very early age. After Arcan got fed up with their father's indifference to all of their accomplishments, he attempted to assassinate the Emperor, but was ultimately stopped by his brother Thexan. The brothers engaged in a brief duel, as Arcan was utterly consumed by his rage, which resulted in Thexan's untimely death. Following this, Arcan would successfully assassinate his father. 
However, Vitiate transferred his essence into another vessel which Arcan Carbon froze. From this point on, Arcan became the Eternal Emperor and led his new empire against the wider galaxy, keeping both sides on their toes, both the Jedi as well as the Sith. Not only was Arcan a natural with the Force, being an incredible duelist and an adept with Force Lightning, but he was also a tactical genius, killing many Jedi and Sith personally, as well as afar from his orders. The war waged on the Republic and Sith Empire backed both of them into corners against his tyrannical might, making him a master of neither the Jedi, the Sith, the Light, or the Dark but clearly a master of the Jedi and the Sith at the time. At number 3, General Grievous. There is no possible way we can talk about the most efficient Jedi hunters without mentioning one of the most notorious hunters of them all, Grievous. The droid general was a terror during the Clone Wars, as well as the face of the Separatist droid army. In most Republic propaganda, it was Grievous who was painted as the mustache twirling villain that the Republic citizens would need to rally against, as Dooku was mostly seen as a separatist politician and a political leader rather than a Sith Lord that he truly was. Grievous though, undoubtedly cast a large shadow over the Republic and struck fear into the hearts of many, including nearly every Jedi trained by the Order's best duelist, Dooku himself, as well as wielding four lightsabers simultaneously with his cybernetic limbs. This enhanced cyborg was an absolute monster on the battlefield. Grievous was a design of modern marvel for the war. He would regularly overwhelm his enemies with his four limbs, and rather than have his Jedi fighting one opponent, they would find themselves facing four at a single time. The spinning lightsabers ambushed his prey, as he could easily hold off several Jedi, even skilled ones at once. He used this fear to keep the Jedi off balance and afraid, because a Jedi with fear within them is as a Jedi that is no connection to the Force. This fear makes them little more than sitting ducks. Besides his four limbs, he was also designed to be equipped with many resources in order to combat his force-wielding foes, such as an integrated cable launcher and clawed feet to which he would use to clamp down on any surface and keep him anchored through force pushes as well as force pulls. Grievous requires no further explanation. Number 2. Darth Nihilus, the Lord of Hunger The penultimate spot definitely is reserved for this Sith Lord, with the ability to swallow force energy quite literally out of living things. Nihilus was an absolute terror for any Jedi to face. By the time he was on the planet level, Nihilus was killing Jedi by the hundreds within a few minutes. When not using this ability of force strain, his saber skill was not something you would wish for him to fall back to, as even though he was mainly a force-based monster, his skill with the blade was still remarkable, and although not considered among the greatest ever duelists in Star Wars lore, he was still highly formidable. We were forced to include Darth Nihilus because he and Sion alike were the ones responsible for the first great Jedi purge. The first great purge that left only a hundred Jedi left in the galaxy to huddle together on Osis. However, despite all of his accomplishments and all of the Jedi death told out by the hands of Nihilus, the number one most efficient Jedi killer must be none other than Darth Vader. We are certain many of you predicted this since the very beginning of the video, but it is still worth talking about. We place Vader above Nihilus for the simple fact that Vader was able to actually finish the job during the second Great Purge, completing his mission of annihilating the Jedi. Where Darth Nihilus left nearly a hundred Jedi still living to make a comeback, you can literally count on your fingers how many Jedi Vader left alive. After Order 66, Vader would spend the next several years obsessively hunting down every last Jedi, a personal obsession of his. The unbridled power of the Dark Chosen One was only slightly hindered by his cybernetics. However, the limitations only served to ironically make him even more efficient at killing the ones that he had once called brothers and sisters. By blending the lightsaber forms of Dejem So, Makashi, and a few implementations from other forms, Vader was able to craft the perfect style to suit his combat needs, as well as obviously kill Jedi. His style was ferocious, cold, efficient, and powerful. No Jedi that ever faced him stood a chance, and he was truly the most cunning Jedi killer in Star Wars lore. So friends, again, this list was based purely off of efficiency, not numbers, and the characters in Star Wars that we believed were the most efficient Jedi killers, as well as individuals that were obsessed with killing Jedi. 
for example. Although Sidious was a highly skilled Jedi killer in his own right, he was not obsessed with killing them directly like many on this list were, and was very much an indirect influence on the death of thousands of Jedi. While his numbers are of course near the top, he of course on a level to level basis is not known for killing Jedi. So, what did you think of this list? Do you agree with our ranking, Students of the Force? And who did we miss that you believe belonged on this list? Let us know down below, and as always, and again if you would like a list comprised of those that could not touch the gifts of the Force and yet were still excellent Jedi killers, be sure to like the video and request it below. As always, Acolytes, may the Force be with you, and have a great day.